No. Uh, right now is the wrong time to reel this in because the patient numbers are expanding so quickly. The supply needs to keep up with that. And it's even under current conditions, it's not able to keep up because government is erecting all these barriers all the time. So we've got to let this industry grow into its own before the government comes in and tries to crush it with regulations. And that's what these regulations would do. I mean, let's make no bones Talk about, about, about uh, layers Chris's, and Chris's, layers of Chris's bill here. What is the biggest problem with the proposed legislation? Ooh, uh, that's a tough one. Give me, pick give me the one top biggest couple. one. Uh, well, the fact that it repeals the Fifth Amendment to the United States Constitution is How's a little it? bit of a problem. During a hearing um, to get your medical marijuana dispensary license, you must provide testimony. You can't refuse to testify on the grounds of the Fifth Amendment, and it, can't, it can be used against any other person that you rat out. That's a problem. It's got a direct linkage to the FBI. Uh, the Colorado Bureau of Investigation is required to turn over all fingerprint and personnel data to the Federal Bureau of Investigation which uh, creates a lot of problems, is going to create uh, a lot of reluctance to comply with these regulations. They're unenforceable. It also has a requirement that you post a sign on your grow location before you start growing there to notify the public and any child in the neighborhood that soon there will be medical marijuana plants growing in that location. That is a major barrier to uh, production and increase of supply and dangerous because children in the neighborhood, it's an attractive nuisance to them. They're going to be breaking in and trying to steal this marijuana. Uh, discretion and secrecy is a very important part of this industry. Um, I mean, there are many other problems with this bill, like it second guesses physicians. If a physician issues too many recommendations, he's, he, has to, he or she has to go in front of a physician review panel. What I'm planning on doing is I'm planning on taking Senator Romer's bill and doing a word replace on my computer and taking out all the words medical marijuana and putting abortion in there and having abortion doctors be licensed, having public comment on abortion facilities, having them have to turn over their home addresses for, for late night comments about their activities, having them having to go in front of citizen review panels uh, to second guess their physician decisions. Any person who comes in for that service who's 21 or under, uh, they have to pass a, a peer review panel before that service takes place. I, I, I'm sure that Senator Romer would probably vote against that type of regulation if you replace the words <coughs> medical would, marijuana with abortion. You would vote against it. You would. And, and that you, would, you, and hang that's on, because you, that would you, can, you can sit that point. Why, if it, if it were abortion, would you vote against this bill if it said, instead of medical marijuana in your bill, it said abortion for all these things? Why well, would you vote I, against it? I mean, look, well, first and foremost, I'm pro-abortion, pro, pro but I'm also pro-medical marijuana. Th this is a second uh, draft. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Log, log, logic circuits just overloaded in my head. If you're pro-abortion, I've got some and medicine. Pro, if, if you got some medicine for me. <laughs> and, and pro medical marijuana. If you had the same restrictions on both, you it would be consistent to support both sets of restrictions. They'd be the same. Um, John, let me be clear about this. I, I I I hear the example, and I understand in the second draft there are some issues here, particularly on HIPAA confidentiality. I'd love to work with and, you and, and, and and Rob, we're going to work together. To I know that. But but uh, the, the 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 issue is is we are in uncharted territory, so. This is a little bit of a ham-handed first attempt to put some rules on it. It's actually the second draft. We're working with a bunch of dispensaries and other people in the industry. They may not be as sharp uh, uh, a lawyer as Rob, and they may have overlooked some issues. The, the goal is to have a common sense of common sense rules where the public has some sense that we're regulating and corralling this so that there is a steady... it. I, I understand I that, but I, I, I think like there's a philosophical term. difference about the Wild West versus corralling it and I regulating don't like it. Corralling, but corralling is you take a horse or, or a cattle, you, you you take it by the neck and rip it down and tie its legs up. I mean, I don't like that image. That's not what we should be doing with this. Well, I don't like the current. We've only got we've only got about three minutes left. So let, let me let me put out this this observation. Time distortion. When we when we have a new business open, one of the great things about America, or at least what we think is America, is that anyone can start up a business. And that I want to start up my lemonade stand, I do that. Right. That's not always the case. For instance, in uh, taxi cabs here in Denver, you need to go to government and ask, Mother, may I please open up a taxi cab company, risk my own personal capital, mm -hmm. and perhaps perhaps provide a good service. And if I fail, then I'm the one out of, out of my own resources. Right. Now, right now, we have a system where anyone who wants to, who meets whatever requirements, can do so, why in the world would we want to rein in this fledgling uh, business without seeing where it's going to go first? Job creating, tax-paying, 
space renting, employee hiring. I mean, this is a positive thing. You've got to look at this as a positive thing for there are otherwise great, hurting clear, economy. There are a number of patients who are really being helped. The existence of dispensaries has helped provide more choice. We do need to bring the price down. I'll agree with all of that. I do think we need to tap on the brakes at some point regarding physical locations. How many Why? Where, Let's do that. Why? Why? Why is it your business where I open up my Because I think there's more potential downside to having this go cattywamp than there was on yoga studios or doggy daycares. How so? I, I think crime relating to security issues. I think relating to uh, access. We have jewelry stores everywhere. Uh, we have we have pharmacies everywhere. People I, want to have those controlled these substances. These are safer than uh, bars, I, liquor I, stores, now, banks, whether this is Whether this is stores. angst yeah. uh, uh, of just parental angst regarding middle schoolers and high schoolers getting access, because I think once you set up a physical location, your desire is to target and to grow your demand. And now, so, I, I live in Boulder. Uh, the best liquor mart <laughs> in the world is is liquor mart or liquor store. It's uh -huh. it's. I want to be buried there. This is yeah. where I spent my college years. It is a stone's throw from Boulder High School. Sure. And so is a porn shop right yeah. there. You know what? They seem to have thrived, but all of them without uh, doing it because you can't buy booze at Liquor Mart unless you're 21. You can't buy porn at the porn store unless you're 18 or whatever it is. You know, so why would having this in proximity to the jewelry store or to the pharmacy next to a school make any difference? Because right now we don't even have a department under which this fits in government. Under liquor, if you sell to an, un an underage person, you close your liquor store usually for two or three days. We just want the same consequences for misbehaving. We want bright lines. We want to know where it's grown. We want to know it's safe. And we know that it's grown in Colorado and not brought over state lines. And we want to make sure it's pesticide free. So I think there's a regulatory model that works, Min I may have pushed it too far in my first or second draft. M minute left. What's wrong with having some of those simple consumer protections? In other words, if, if, if I'm an average Joe, I've never done marijuana before, but I've got pains from whatever, I want to try this, I want to make sure that it's safe. I want to make sure that it's not cut with something nasty. I want to make sure that this is, this is what it says it is. Why not have some minimal amount of... We, we have those. Simple consumer protections are A, not in this bill and B, already being organized by the industry ourselves. We're unifying as an industry. We've come together under the Colorado Wellness Association. We are trying to create uh, paradigms of quality control, labeling, and purity, and quality, and, per and THC percentage. Continues. Rob Corey, thank you. Senator Romer, thank you. And most importantly, thank you. Tell a friend about the Independence Institute. Check us out online, independenceinstitute.org, and we'll see you next week. News on Pippity Pop, she called. You jib a jab, bamboos on your gun, news on Pippity Pop, she called. I mean, you keep on talking, but you don't know where to turn it.